Now, if we jump into the Marine, in the Marine area, and for some reason I didn't uh, change the name here, um, just think Marine while we're looking at this slide here. Um, this is an area that we've used uh, the medium range. Uh, so you see here, it's a slightly different collection of scanners, and I've seen all of these used in the marine area as well, um, because those are more medium-sized objects. I mean, depending on the, the type of marine you're talking about. If you're talking about a yacht, I guess you would consider that a long range. But in this instance, we're scanning a boat hull, and that's what I'm going to show. So these different scanners here are really good for objects of that size. So these handhelds do a great job of these medium range, as well as using like a, a LiDAR scanner as well, if you want to do some different positions around the outside. Um, but I do see more and more handhelds, and then even like a, like this is the Kionts, like different tracking uh, type scanners um, used more in these medium size because you're able to link to this and get a lot of accuracy. Same thing with uh, um, the ScanTech here with the Nimble is it has a, a medium sized volume but still maintaining pretty high accuracy. So this is the reason why I'm saying medium size is the the marine market as we know is one of the the first um, markets in a way you could think of it um, for manufacturing going all the way, all the way back to the shipbuilding, a starting from when man started creating boats to sail across the, the blue sea. Right. Um, and manufacturing boats has, has a super, super, super long legacy of creating these, these boats mainly by hand, right? A lot of these designs, even modern designs, there are different hull designers that prefer to design these things by hand because of the expertise that they have. And that's one application is capturing legacy designs that they just know are amazing ones that work for different applications, depending on the type of watercraft that you're talking about, um, to whether it's a ski boat or a luxury or whatever. I, I'm not a boat expert, as you can probably tell, but these people have created with their amazing wealth of knowledge, these types of things, and they need to capture that and remanufacture it. So a lot of the, the boat companies have used this type of scanning and reverse engineering to capture their designs that they've always made and um, remanufacture their molds and, and parts. That's one. Um, and some, some people even use it for historic preservation, right? Um, scanning these types of things to, uh, make sure that we have a record of the types of ships that existed at different periods so they can study them. So there's always that historical side, which I'm not covering today, but it's really interesting. But you can see here, this is a hull design. And really the gist of it is how did Design X help with this? And again, these are highly complicated swept shapes. Um, so we will just come over here and show my part and just kind of roll back through the history and just talk about how the uh, model was created. Because I don't know about you, like some of the inspiration of this, of this uh, webinar series is really just because us over here um, as application engineers, sometimes we do geek out over how stuff is done and how it was modeled. And we just love seeing how these things, these projects were accomplished. And we just figured we would share it, share it with you. So that's another reason why we're, we're here today doing this. So we'll go ahead. Like I said before, I'm using the shortcuts there. And if I turn on the surface model, um, so you can see this one, we scanned and we created a surface from it. So here is the surface file, and you see that it has texture with it. And we'll come over to the uh, display and turn the texture off just so you can see it. And depending on whether it's a mold or a plug or whatever it is, you can 
zoom in and see whether it was a positive or a negative. And we can flip those normals anyway. So whether you scanned it from the inside or the outside, we can flip those normals in here and model it on the other side if you want to, regardless of which way it was scanned. So in this instance, a lot of times we're scanning different molds and plugs to capture these favorite designs that have been proven to work throughout generations, right? So um, if I come back here and just roll back, and this one will go a little faster just because we have a little less, a little less data to work with. But you have to admit that is super, super uh, impressive being able to load something of that size up and work with it here in a meeting, even though, I mean, it's an entire job site model that was rolling back through. So yeah, it takes a second, but that's pretty crazy that we can do that. So you hear, see here, they, they wanted to start off with, for one, it's aligned to the world and they're gonna model half of it. So that's clear what's going on right now. And they're gonna go ahead and capture that lip. And then you see here, if I roll forward, they're gonna um, draw some more sketches and then trim some stuff together. And you'll see here that there was something going on here where it's not like one continuous uh, shape. So they chose to like create some sort of blend surface between the two. So a lofted blend surface there. And we'll just go a few more steps forward. So now we'll just jump forward here. They went ahead and let's go back to the loft real quick, just to show how this was created. So you see here that we created a loft with these surf uh, with these profiles, and we have different ways of creating the loft in here. You can use a loft wizard by selecting the data, or you can manually cut those cross sections and draw those splines yourself. Which a little known fact, I believe the math for these splines that we now utilize for CAD modeling. If you look that up on Wiki or whatever, the was discovered from the ship building industry, right? Of the math, when they figured out how to mathematically rep represent these splines, it comes from the ship building. That's where they kind of discovered they were using these ribs and wrapping boards around those and the length of the board and where the ribs were, where the anchor points are the vertices and wrapping boards around it. So it's really cool to see how we're actually using like modern techniques um, that are very similar with the application which, in which they were discovered. Right, so now we're just fitting. You see here with this type of model, it's a very complicated flowing shape with lots of curvature. And this one is a surface modeling tutorial, really is what it is. The other one was like a, here's how we model an entire job site and approach this giant uh, project. And how do you break it down into smaller pieces and model it as chunks and piece it all together that's kind of like what you learn from that one in a way this one is like here's how you fit surfaces and trim them all together so you can see here that you extract all of these and you just and we'll just step forward step forward you're fitting more fitting this section and that section and this section and we'll just turn that off so we can see what we're looking at here and then trimming them all together. So now we went ahead and fit this one. And there's different approaches to how you want, can, can model this stuff, right? This is one person's approach and it's a great one. Um, but 
again, so many times when I'm showing workflows and stuff, people are like, well, why didn't you do this? Or why didn't you do that? There's lots of different ways of accomplishing this stuff in here. If we gave this model to a hundred different design X experts, it would be a hundred different uh, model examples. Some yes would be better than others, but so trim those together and we'll turn this off. So you see here that we went ahead and created all of this and then fit the tops and sides of each of these ribs and then trimmed all of those in. And just step it forward a few times. So we just do the rinse and repeat for those ribs, do the same thing, trim them in. And then now here, let's work on the back is what's going on here. So we went ahead and extracted this, these pieces, and just to, you see what's going on here. This area, fit these guys, fit this, the vertical. And turn on my surfaces for some reason. It, it hid them all. <laughs> and then, so there we are. We, we trimmed all of those things in together. And trim it in here. So a lot of this is rinse and repeat now. Fit, 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 trim, trim, trim. Get your order right so you can kind of create. What they're doing now is creating essentially a tool, creating a tool surface for the back to trim this in either one chunk or a couple chunks away and trim it in, right? Now I'll turn some of these surfaces on so you can see. Where. So you got all these different guys here on the back. And we'll just zoom in just so you can get an idea of what's happening. Turn on the mesh off. You're fitting all of these different surfaces. And then you'll see getting your trim orders. And look at trim all that stuff together. Remove all that, whether the mold was damaged or whatever. You can design that out of there. So from here, then you start adding your fillets in. You'll see here that we're adding the blends all over the model. And then here's the big one, mirroring it together. Trim it all together. And there we have a beautiful boat model. And like we talked about in week number one, you can live transfer over to SolidWorks, Creo, Inventor, NX. AutoCAD would not really, because it's more of a prismatic modeler here. Yeah, I can send stuff over there, but it's not going to be fully editable because it's not a parametric over there, fully parametric.